Hello, welcome to Accounting Hub. I'm Professor George Scarping, PhD in Accounting. And our topic today is forecasting te techniques, hot winters, additive seasonality with train. Maybe the most complete uh, hot winters model, uh, also with the multiplicative one, but when we add seasonality and trend. So the additive model applies to time series with relatively stable seasonality and is based on the equation. Forecast for the level T minus one is equal to level plus trend plus seasonality. That is why it is additive model. And here we have the formula. So we need three components now, alpha, beta, and epsilon. So with these three components, the level uh, is alpha times actual number minus the seasonality component or the seasonal component, T minus S, so this uh, same month or quarter of the previous year, plus one minus alpha multiplied by this A, T minus one, plus B, the trend component, T minus one. So here, that is the level component. The trained component, beta, times AT, so we need AT before BT, minus AT minus one, plus one minus beta uh, times BT minus one. And the seasonal component, epsilon, multiplied by the actual number, minus AT, plus one minus epsilon, multiplied by the seasonal component of the previous here. And then for the forecast, we combine all of them. And if we are forecasting more than one period, for instance, working with monthly data, and I want to forecast two months ahead instead of one, then it's the actual or the less actual number plus B, T, times K. K is the number of months ahead. So, this, so the first month will be times one second month times two, plus st minus s plus k, that is to take the same month of the previous year. Considering I am working with two full years or full uh, year data, and I'm going to forecast January and February. So this st will be the last January. For February, it, it, it will be the last February, for instance. However, what about the initial numbers? And the initial numbers are an issue uh, for the uh, hot winters models. So the A, AT is the average of the first year or the uh, of data for quarters or 12 months. ST, actual number minus AT uh, for all of our seasonal components. However, for the trend, the formula is a little bit more complicated. It is A S plus I minus A I. So we grab, for instance, first January plus second January divided by two. First February divided by uh, first, uh, sorry, for January. First January or the second January minus the first January divided by 12, because it's divided by S. February, second February minus first February divided by 12, and all of this divided by 12. So we can do first January minus, uh, second January minus first January, second February minus uh, first February, and so on, divided by 12, and then again, divided by 12. So divided by 12, twice. However, let's go to our Excel file. It's much easier if we do it there. So let's consider a sales revenue here and uh, not actual sales revenue. Here from January to December, the first year, the second year, the third year. So here, because of this trend component, we need at least two years to do a proper, a proper forecast. So at least three years, sorry. Two years to get the initial value for trains, and then one year, uh, full year for the, for the uh, three components to work smoothly. So here, let's go. Level, the average 
of the first year. And then the same number for all of our month. Seasonality, that is easier. Actual minus level. So actual minus level for all of the first year. What about trend? Here, what I told you, 1st January, or 2nd January minus 1st January, plus 2nd February minus 1st February, and so on. So all of this formula divided by 12, and then again divided by 12. Because here we have 1st divided by 12 here, the 2nd divided by 12 here, or divided by 144. And then, okay. Now let's go to the second year where we have our formulas, where we have these formulas here. So let's go to the level component. So alpha times actual number minus the seasonality, so minus the, the previous January, plus one minus alpha times uh, the previous alpha plus the trend, so plus trend. So that is what we have here. So previous alpha plus the previous trend. And then dollar sign before the level, we can copy and paste this formula to the two remaining years. For the trend, beta times the level, so the actual level, minus the previous level, plus one minus beta times the previous trend. That is what we do. Uh, and then later seasonality, epsilon times actual number minus seasonality, plus one minus epsilon uh, times the previous seasonality. If you go to the model without trend, the level and seasonality formulas are the same. We are only adding the trend component. Okay, and then the forecast, we combine uh, previous level plus previous trend plus the first seasonality. Okay, so that is if we go here, uh, FT plus K is AT plus BT times 1. So T here would be December. T plus K, that is January. So we are assuming that we don't know the January numbers. And then plus the seasonality of the last year. And then we have the MAPE or the average percentage error, that is forecast minus actual number divided, or the absolute difference between forecast minus actual number divided by actual number. So here with a random 0 0.1, 0 0.2, and 0 0.3, we are facing this map. And then to forecast January, the same formula, so we can copy and paste because the K is one, so the trend will be times one. However, for the second previous level plus previous trend times two, because now K is two, plus the second seasonality. And then March times three times four and so on. However, are these the best Alpha, the best uh, alpha, beta, and epsilon. Don't know, probably not, because I add it, I add this randomly. So how do we find the optimal number? So make 6.04. So let me type it here because it will be changing later. How do we do that? We do that using solver. If you don't have solver, just go file, options, addings, Excel addings, go, and solver. So if I uncheck here, the solver will disappear. If I go back here, whoops, solver will be here. Okay, so let's do it, solver. What do we want? We want to minimize 
the MAPE, the medium absolute or the mean absolute percentage error. So we will minimize it by changing these three cells. And so, okay, let's see what we have. Instead of 6.04 for 26. And a fixed trend here, so nothing to multiply on trends. That happens. Okay, guys, uh, it's not that easy, especially the formula. So practice earlier, use this Excel sheet as a guidance. And if you have questions or comments, just let them hear or email me. Have a very nice day and God bless you.